I'm not Ben, I'm John Ellard from Urban Elements. Um, when Plassey asked me to talk around the subject of do you need a business plan to get online, um, what I wanted to really cover was a quick definition from myself about what online entails, what that actually means. Um, I then wanted to sort of cover in a few points about a strategic approach to getting yourselves online. Um, as I go through those two things, you're going to get a bit of a background to myself and our company. And what I really want to do is lead you up to a point where we got to in 2008, 2009, where something quite critical happened to our business. Um, what that meant to us and some of the techniques and challenges uh, we had to survive that period uh, and get to where we are today. And then I really want to try and draw some of the points I've um, made over the next 10 minutes together in a, a case study. So they're the objectives I'd like to go through this evening. Um, quick background to my company, established in 2003, so our 10 year anniversary will be September this year. Our core business is uh, web consultancy, graphic design, e-commerce, uh, content management systems, and in the last three years, more and more online marketing, and uh, in the last sort of 18 months, more and more social media. Um, we have produced applications for PLCs, um, and we have done uh, web applications for the third sector, not-for-profit sector. A uh, bit of background to myself, I studied business studies and became an associate of the Chartered Institute of Marketing, probably about 10 years ago now. Uh, I am dyslexic, so tonight I apologise in advance that I may look to one of you to try and find the word that I'm looking for, or try and find the word that I'm trying to, to get to explain a point I'm trying to make. Uh, equally, I might come out with some new technical jargon that you're thinking, write that down, it sounds like some new social media channel, uh, Facebook or something. It's not, I've just said the wrong word, so apologies for that. Um, and finally, I was running a direct marketing company before I merged my direct marketing company with Urban Element uh, back in 2004. And really that's because at the time I was doing traditional kind of marketing, I recognised where uh, online was coming in and I decided to get involved in a, an internet company early on rather than waiting for my sort of traditional business to uh, run down. Client portfolio, uh, to date we've done 200 plus websites for small to medium sized businesses. We've done 20 websites for large companies. My definition of a large company will be different to other people's but it's a company that's got a 25 million plus turnover <coughs> and it's uh, got a serious plan or budget behind what they want to achieve from their online. Uh, and we've produced enterprise level applications for Smith's Group PLC um, and a lot of the big banks, <coughs> which I will come on to later. Um, so what does being online entail? I don't expect you to read the bits of this diagram. My next slide will break it down into some bullet points that you can read. But this diagram basically shows that online is not just about having a website, it's not just about having a blog. Being <coughs> online can be many, many different things. And this sort of cog shows that there's a lot of activity going on, the central thing. And the central thing is that core, that black area in the middle, which is your website or your glue. So online entails having a website. <laughs> it involves email marketing. It involves lead generation, organic search engine optimization. And by organic SEO, I mean getting those top Google rankings that sit below, sit below the pay-per-click ones or the sponsored ones and I basically are there by companies that have earned the right to be there because they've got good content and they've got good service and they've got good products. It's about conversion optimization. Nowadays it's not about getting all the traffic to your site or visitors, it's about getting relevant traffic and converting that traffic into an inquiry, into an order, into an engagement. It's about analytics, it's about really analysing the online market and where your traffic is coming from. It's about content marketing, so it's about producing relevant content that's going to make you the authority, the industry expert within your sector. And it's making that uh, content not only readable to your audience, but also readable to Google and other search engines. It is about pay-per-click still. Uh, I'm not a big advocate of pay-per-click, but pay-per-click has its place. Uh, some people swear by it. Uh, whatever you say about pay-per-click, it's very good for data mining and getting information very quickly about your marketplace. And more and more, it's about social media. So having just sort of looked at what is online or having an online business and going through those things, um, when I show this to my clients and I say, this is what we're going to be talking about over the next three months when we produce your new website, I expect them to be <coughs> excited. Um, what normally happens is they feel daunted, 
confused, not sure where to start. Uh, what about running my business? Who does this? Me, the team, do I outsource? How much is this going to cost? Is this going to give us a return on investment? Um, and there's some of the kind of immediate questions I, I get from the clients we talk to. And I'm not suggesting for one second that any of you are like that out there. I know you've all got very strong um, online plans and strong marketing plans. But when I talk to my clients and I raise these kind of questions, um, they do feel slightly daunted by the whole experience. So what I normally do is I say, let's just take a step back and let's take a strategic approach to your online vision, your online plan, your online uh, presence. I ask questions like, do you have a business plan? Do you have a marketing plan? Is your website and online marketing part of the plan? Is it more than a sentence or a paragraph? Is it more than just written on the back of a beer mat? Is the bit about your online presence smart? Uh, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic and time bound. Uh, how often, how long do you spend reviewing your website on online presence? And at this point I would say the problem with any kind of online marketing plan nowadays is it's got to evolve and it's got to change very quickly. You can't put a business plan together nowadays and put it in your safe and review it after three years or five years. When it comes to your online side of things, it's got to be reviewed constantly. It's nothing more than a work in progress, more so than a, a fixed plan. Um, do you have the budget? Um, not just the, the financial budget, but the time budget. A lot of people go into online and suddenly think, I've got a full-time job now, my day job, and I've also got a second full-time job, which is my online job. Have you implemented your plan? And normally the one thing that a lot of people forget at the end is uh, getting it implemented or getting it on board with their team, their staff, their customers, their suppliers, and their stakeholders. Um, I spoke very briefly at a, a peer group support with various MDs, and I went through all those questions. They said, yeah, we've got a plan. Yep, 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 that's fine. And I said, so all your staff are on board? And they said, yes, completely. They all know what we're doing. We're all fine online. I said, great, because I rang all your companies last week, and I asked them uh, if I could have your Twitter account. And the room went quiet. And the response I got from their secretaries, their gatekeepers, the first <coughs> people I spoke to, ranged from, we don't have a Twitter account. And they did, because I've, I'm following their CEO, I'm following their MD. But the secretary or the gatekeeper didn't know they have a Twitter account. Uh, other people didn't know what I meant by asking what their Twitter account. The best one I had was after talking to three different people, as it got escalated to various people, was their marketing manager told me that they don't give that kind of information out. <laughs> so, um, you know, I suppose what I'm saying is I believe a plan is important and it is needed, but unless you're going to take it seriously, um, it's probably better to trial and error and play around a bit. But let's assume we've got a plan, uh, and this is where I'm trying to take away the confusion and it being a daunting process to it sort of being almost a natural process. Um, a leading speaker called Roger Harrop, I don't know if anyone's read the book <coughs> Staying in the Helicopter. Um, if you haven't, it's a really good book. It's quite thin, which is what I like. Um, there's illustrations and pictures. I like that even more. Um, it's a good book to read. But he basically says, in business, you can be a market leader in one discipline. You need to try and be good in all of them, but you can only be a leader in one of those. An exception to the rule might be Tesco's, where they're good at customer service, they're good at product innovation, and they're also very good at um, operational excellence. A lot of the products you buy from Tesco's are a good value because they're coming in very quickly. They've got their supply chain uh, sorted out. Um, so if we look at operational excellence, um, the essence to be the lowest cost provider in the market. If you are a company that's looking to be the market leader in operational excellence, your online plan, your online strategy, is all about just allowing your customers to receive transactions, communications, goods, products, quickly and effectively. So if I was to think of a solicitor client we've got who produces home improvement packs, they used to put them on a memory stick, stick them first class, send them out. Two weeks later, their customer would ring up and say, it hasn't arrived. You sent me some weird plastic thing. What am I supposed to do with that? I don't have a computer. But they would then spend a lot of money resending these uh, hip packs through the post. Now, they're private confidential uh, bits of information, so they can't be found publicly. But this solicitor now has a secure area on their si site where they can give their customer a password and a username. They log in and they download their home improvement pack. It's cheaper than sending memory <coughs> stick in the post. It's quicker and it's measurable because they can measure as soon as their customer's actually opened the resource or the pack that they've been sent.